emerging as a defining challenge of the 21st century, and it's not just environmentalists that say so any longer. A report from the World Economic Forum ranks water crises as more likely and having greater impact globally than terrorism and food shortages. But water risk is not just about drinking water. Water stress causes many problems we don't often think about. Low water levels in waterways can cripple shipping industries and the economy. In the United States, the Mississippi River is at particular risk because it ships $180 billion of freight every year. Issues of water quality and water quantity affect industries and economies the world over. Every single industry is affected. WRI has teamed with our partners to develop an online water risk mapping tool that can help governments and industries measure and manage water risk along 12 key indicators that can be combined and layered to provide a unique and in-depth picture of water stress. These customizable maps are driven by the most high resolution and current water data available. They're a powerful tool for governments, industry, and water experts to determine the water risks they face and avoid costly mistakes. Aqueduct represents many thousands of hours of research and mapping of water risk around our planet, and it puts the information right at your fingertips for free. So I don't want anybody to think that we have a uh, particular affection for Minnesota, but uh, we have a senior representative from Cargill here, which is also a Minnesota company. And I would point out that when I was a congressman, uh, Cargill's uh, meat division was in uh, Wichita. Under, they used the brand Excel, and the, through a series of mergers, uh, that became part of the Cargill operation. It's where Cargill's CEO, Greg Page, uh, oversaw for many, many years. So, I'm really glad that Cargill is here. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome Joe Stone, Corporate Vice President and Chief Risk Officer of Cargill Incorporated to the stage. Joe. Thank you, Dan. Dan, thanks for that introduction. I didn't know you had such an affection for steaks until we were talking right behind the scenes there. Well, it's great to be here, and we really appreciate the opportunity as Cargill to get a chance to speak to this group. I can tell you we learned a tremendous amount this morning from each of you in the presentations and the panels. So at Cargill, uh, our goal is to be the global leader in nourishing people. And just like Chris mentioned this morning, we get really energized with 160,000 employees all focused on the grand challenges of our generation. And we've defined those as food security, sustainability, and nutrition. We believe that partnerships are absolutely critical. Partnerships are absolutely critical for all of us to address these challenges and provide safe, affordable, and nutritious food for the future. So at Cargill, we've been in business for about 150 years, and we've been very fortunate to be working with farmers for all of those 150 years in at least 60 countries around the world. Farmers are the backbone of, of agriculture. Farmers are on the front lines of innovation and entrepreneurship. But at the same time, farmers have been held responsible for greenhouse gas emissions, for climate change, for water contamination, and many other things. And at Cargill, we think it's time to change. We think it's time to shift our approach and no longer just sit and debate some of the impacts and some of the details, but we think the time is now for all of us working across the aisles from public, private, and with industry to shift our approach to work together to take action and make progress on these issues. So together we need to focus on four priorities to build a more sustainable food system. Land, water, climate, and supporting our farmers. We want to keep it that simple. Land, water, climate, and supporting our farmers. So first, let's talk about land. We feel passionately that we need to eliminate deforestation. We know how critical forests are to making sure that we are sequestering greenhouse gases and slowing the effects of climate change. 
And I'd just be really curious from the audience, how many of you think that we should stop deforestation? Okay, looks like we got about 90%. Peer pressure is a good thing. Back in 24, you said? Good, thank you very much. We agree with that. And in 2014, we signed the New York Declaration uh, to eliminate deforestation in our supply chains. And for Cargo, that was really a bold step for us. I think we want to be a company that leads in this area, not sits behind and waits for things to happen, but we want to be leaders. And so last year in our company, we unveiled our deforestation policy. So all across Cargill now, we are on a very firm track to eliminate deforestation across all our supply chains. We've been really fortunate to work with, with organizations like Greenpeace and a few others in Brazil. And over the last 10 years, we've been able to reduce deforestation in Brazil by almost 80%. And so I think that's what shows what can happen when we all come together in a common goal with a common cause. The next thing I'd like to talk about would be water. And so when you think about water, um, the, Nash, the uh, IFPR estimates that by 2050, about half the world, about half the people in the world, half of those 9 billion people that we have to feed will be in water-scarce areas. In addition to that, they see the risk that the, about 50% of our cropland could also be impacted significantly by water scarcity. And so what we've been doing as Cargill is we've been working with the World Resource Institute, who's a good sponsor today, and here's a snapshot of a map that we've got. We think that de deploying big data is absolutely critical to managing the opportunity that we've got about more efficiently using the scarce resource of water. So if you take a look at the map, what we've done, and we even use this with our capital studies, we can now algorithmically project you know, where we think some of these water tight spots are going to be. And we think that has a really important impact on making agriculture more productive, helping our farmers thrive, and using our water much more efficiently. But it also is a good example of partnerships, and the WRI has been a fantastic partner for Cargill, and we're really pr proud of the progress that we've made. The next area that we'd like to talk about is climate, and we think climate is a really critical key to a sustainable food system. We need to advance carbon solutions. When it comes to aggressing climate risk, governments, businesses, NGOs, we can all work together to come up with practical solutions. A few months ago, uh, Cargill, Mars, and the WWF all got together, and we collaborated to produce food chain reaction. And I know there are a few people in the audience. I saw Alan over there, Alan Barkema, who was at food chain reaction. It was fantastic, because we got 65 people from around the world from NGOs, from private industry, and, we, and, and governments as well. And we looked at the impact of climate change on the food system. And as you can imagine, many scenarios were thrown at, uh, at this team, like global drought and famine. But what, what we really walked away with were a couple recommendations, and one that I wanted to share with you. One of the most important recommendations from this food chain reaction was we need to work together to to curb greenhouse gas emissions with cross-border solutions. Now, we didn't get as prescriptive in that group of food chain reaction to say, should it be a carbon tax or should it be cap and trade? But I can tell you as Cargill, we want to be engaged in those debates because we do think that cross-border carbon solutions are a really important part of a sustainable agriculture future. And then finally, what we'd like to talk about is strengthening farmer livelihoods and supporting the resilience of farmers. I think as you heard Chris talk about over lunch, farmers are phenomenal, they are resilient, they are the backbone of agriculture, and we need to help them. We need to provide them with the best tools, the best possible technologies, and the best possible practices. We're very fortunate in Zambia to have a very interesting farm service network that we use to work with small, smallholder farmers. And in that network, we have seen yields rise four to five times just by applying the appropriate amounts of technology, fertilizer, and, uh, and a few other things. I think that's critically, critically important. Um, in addition to that, uh, do you have the slide on uh, Mr. Peterson? Okay. In addition to that, we have worked with uh, third-generation farmers. For example, Mr. Peterson 
has been a customer of Cargill since 1999, and he's a third generation farmer in Nebraska. And what we have done with Mr. Peterson, the, the good news, we've worked with him so long, we can really track how his business has changed. And since, uh, since two, 1999, we've been able to reduce the amount of water and the amount of inputs that his farm is using by over 36%. And at the same time, you've heard the impact on yields, as Chris mentioned earlier, we've seen an exponential rise in yields. And so we think that is really important. We've got to embrace farmers. We have got to help, we have got to help train them. And, and I think the question earlier about what are we doing on extension, you know, in private industry, we can do that. We can help in that way. And so I guess in conclusion, what we'd want to say is we believe we can do this. We believe as Cargill we can band together, work across the aisles between public and private institutions and NGOs, and we believe we've got to do this. This is our responsibility. We're eager to build trust. We're eager to build your partnership. And we believe very strongly that we can have a more sustainable, food secure future. But at the same time, without bold and courageous action, we risk being judged by history for debating the details and getting stuck in the details, but having a failure to act. So thank you very much. We invite your partnership and uh, appreciate your time today. Thank you.